this is Angela with Progress Permaculture. I had meant to do a video this evening giving y'all a turkey update because several folks had asked, but it is raining outside and so I am filming in my front room. So forgive noise in the kitchen, my husband is making dinner. I will do a turkey update, I promise. It will happen this week, I promise, I promise. Um, but today I wanna to take a slightly different bent. I want to talk about something that may be like a little weird for this channel, but is entirely on topic. I want to talk about a post that came up recently in a gardening group I was in, and I've seen it before in the past. It's this post right here. Um, first, let me say that I'm a beekeeper. My eldest daughter, Ruth, is a beekeeper. We have kept honeybees for several years, and I am absolutely enamored with native bees and very interested in native bee conservation and how I can support native pollinators. I actually have a blog post recently on this very subject. So when I saw this picture come up, I was like, okay, I gotta talk about this. In permaculture, we say the problem is the solution. This post is not a problem per se, but it is an opportunity for education. It is an opportunity to learn what is true and what isn't and what is correct and what isn't and use that to our advantage in our design. When everybody was saying like, oh, I can get real blazed off this honey or, oh my gosh, weed honey, like that's such a great thing. I wanna become a beekeeper so that I can have, you know, honey that will get me, you know, stoned AF. Um, I thought, okay, I, I just wanna, I wanna talk about this for a minute. Is this picture accurate? Is it true? that honeybees love to flock to cannabis flowers? Yes and no. This picture is staged. This picture is a big no. The article that it came from, I'll link to it below, is from a beekeeper that says he trains his bees to visit cannabis flowers. By training, he means spraying the flower with sugar water so that the bees will visit it. He also claims he has trained his bees to eat slices of fruit. Well, bees naturally, native and honeybees naturally will go for fruit in periods of low nectar flow, in periods where they are hungry and they need to seek out sugar and moisture, like late summer. You can often find both native bees, bumblebees, um, you know, um, serotina bees, all kinds of native bees and honeybees visiting fallen fruit. You can also find lots of wasps that do as well. But it's not really about training other than depriving them of their natural sources of nectar until they feel compelled to go to the only source uh, of food available, which is fruit. So when this, this person said like, I have trained my bees and they are making can of honey for me, like that's staged and that's not, that's not really what's happening. So first let's clarify a few things about how cannabis grows. I am not by any means an expert, but I do know a little bit about it. So cannabis is anemophilous. That means it is wind pollinated. What can we understand from that truth? Cannabis plants have not evolved to attract pollinators. They don't actually need pollinators. The aroma of cannabis plants is actually off-putting to a lot of pollinators because much like grapes, it relies on the wind to transfer the pollen from the male flower to the female flower. And that brings up the second fact about cannabis plants. They are dioecious. There are male plants and there are female plants. So in this picture, the female cannabis plant has nothing to offer the bees. She doesn't need to produce nectar. The wind doesn't ask for nectar. This picture is staged using sugar water. But do you remember when I answered the question, do bees visit cannabis plants? It was no and yes. The female has nothing to offer bees. The male, on the other hand, produces large amounts of resinous pollen. And all bees need pollen. Honeybees make a product called bee bread out of pollen where they ferment the pollen and that is the primary source of protein in their diet. They don't just eat honey, they eat honey and they eat pollen in the form of bee bread. All kinds of native bees love to collect pollen and the pollen of the cannabis plant is particularly attractive to some native bees. In fact, I was reading an article in American Bee Journal where they talk about how a study was done showing that 31% of the bee species, I believe I'm quoting that right, I will link down below to the article, were bombus, bumblebees, and how much they like to visit the male plants to collect the pollen as a protein-rich food source. Now, 
my dog's gonna scratch his ear, but okay. The cannabis plants don't really have that in mind. That is not their ideal. They just want the wind to carry their pollen grains onto the female flowers. But the bees are taking advantage of that resource and swooping in and eating it. In fact, there have been a few studies. There was an entomological study I will also link to below that talked about how the benefits of growing hemp and other plants in the cannabis genus, how important they may be for our native pollinators and also our honeybees, not as a nectar source because they are not one, and that those fields of cannabis do not require bees for pollination, but the pollen on the male plants is attractive and an excellent high protein food source for native and European honeybees. The plants are highly resinous and this American Bee Journal article and a few other sources that I had read had speculated like, you know, bees harvest resin from trees in order to make propolis, which is the glue that, it's kind of an antibacterial glue actually, that they use to seal their hive. The beekeeper in this article was speculating, I wonder how much they might potentially want to harvest resin from the cannabis plant for the same purpose. If they can use it from trees, can they also use it from the cannabis plant? But I didn't really find any research um, in my digging about whether that's been studied in either honeybees or if native bees collect the resin for that purpose. Now, can you get weed honey? Is that a thing? Yes, but it is infused. Bees do not make it for you. If bees visit a cannabis plant, they don't get high. They don't get stoned. Any THC they might encounter is not psychoactive. And they don't take it back to the colony and create honey that has THC in it. That is not a thing. In fact, I was reading about, let me read this to you actually. Let me read this, this paragraph from this article. Fancy infusions. One company is working on producing a sweet cannabinoid product that is colloquially referred to as hemp honey, although it is not exactly honey. This company secured a patent for a type of honey bee feed that is essentially CBD oil emulsified in water and mixed with beet sugar. The bees will consume the feed because it's sugar beet sugar and they will produce something that kind of resembles honey but is loaded with CBD. Bees make honey from nectar from flowers. Sugar water does not make honey. They can make super concentrated sugar water, and in this instance, using sugar beets infused with cannabinoids, you can get a honey-like product that bees make that is not honey. It's just concentrated, regurgitated sugar water with CBD in it. So you're getting spat up sugar water that is concentrated. It's not honey. It's not the same thing as honey. They can't call it honey. You can also purchase, depending on where you live, if it's legal from your local dispensary or folks make it at home, you can have honey that is infused with actual cannabis. None of that is honey made by bees that is weed honey. It's either not honey if bees make it, or it is not made by bees. It is infused by humans. So I hope that that answers the questions and like uses this illustration here, which is highly deceptive and staged, as a way we can learn not only about the behavior of bees, honeybees and native bees, and not only learn a little bit of botany when we learn about how dioecious plants behave, how anemophilous plants behave, how cannabis behaves, but also learn about the integration and connection between hemp and other cannabis products, other cannabis plants in the landscape, how they interact when we choose to plant them with our native bee populations and our honeybee populations and how that may be a benefit. We may end up seeing that cannabis plants, in fact, the return of hemp production in America is a boon to our native bees, provides them that pollen that they need for extra protein in their diet. Time will tell, but it's an interesting thing to start diving into and I hope more folks start researching it. Thanks for watching today. Please click like and subscribe and check out my Patreon down below. I will be back for my permaculture garden in Portland, Oregon later this week.